What's up guys, Greg here with Lens Protego and Lens Rentals, and I'm guessing that you just shot some awesome 360 footage that you're super stoked on, but now you're trying to figure out what to do next. Well, you've come to the right place. Today I'm gonna to show you how to take that footage that you just shot, bring it into the software, stitch it together, edit it, chop it up, throw on some transitions, and get it out there for the world to see. So we're gonna start by stitching all of this footage together. Now some cameras do stitch internally, so if you already have that equirectangular 360 video, you can skip this next part. And I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanna go ahead. Otherwise, let's jump right into the computer and get started. So once you're on the computer, what you're gonna to wanna to do is open up your internet browser and then navigate to your camera's manufacturer's website. On there, you should be able to download a app which will let you stitch all of this footage together. It's different for every camera, so you'll have to do it for your camera manufacturer. I'm using the Insta360 Pro, so I'm gonna to go to insta360.com and then I'm gonna look for the downloads folder. It'll show me all the different camera options. Insta360 Pro is the camera that I'm using. And then we'll scroll down until we see this Insta360 Pro Stitcher. We're gonna download it for Mac OS because I'm on a Mac, but you can also get it for Windows if you need to. I already have it downloaded, so I'm just gonna skip this step and open up what I already have. And this is the screen that you're gonna be greeted with. What you wanna do is navigate to your video files. So I'm gonna go up here, my hard drive, workflow, video, footage. And then these are all my sample clips that I wanna bring in here. So I'm just gonna take all of them and make sure you're grabbing the full directory. You don't wanna just grab the video clips because it needs this gyro data and the pro.prj file as well. So make sure you're grabbing the full file and folder format. Once you do that and drop it in, you'll have all of your clips right here and you can jump through them and it should play back. And if you click this little drop down arrow, you can see all of your original files. So you have one camera angle, your second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth camera angle in this 200 degree fisheye lens. Once you have the shot that you wanna export, over on the right you have all of your settings for that export and making sure it's in the right file type. Most of these are gonna stay where they are, but there's a few little tweaks that we'll make as we go through them. So starting at the top, we have content type, monoscopic, that's correct, so we'll just leave that alone. Stitching mode, new optical flow. This is a camera specific type of stitching mode and it's definitely the highest quality stitching process. We're gonna do sampling type, we'll do that fast. Blend type, auto, or you can do OpenCL or CPU, depending on what type of computer you have. We'll use the default circle position. We're not moving the camera around so we don't need the gyroscope on so we can leave that off. Use hardware decoding, fastest. Reference frame, so this is where you can sort of set the thumbnail cut video. If you want to do any sort of trimming, it does take a pretty powerful computer to export and render all of this footage and stitch it together. So if you need to shorten it up, you can do that in here. Quick way to do this is if you play it, you can find the point that you want it to start, come over here and hit this little clock that'll set that time. And then you can play it again or drag around to the end, hit the other clock, and then that will set your in and out points to export from. Now the output resolution, we're gonna leave that at 8K. We want the maximum quality. MP4, H.264, you could also do H.265 if you want. I'm gonna leave it at H.264. Profile, baseline, bit rate, frame rate, 30 frames a second, that's what we recorded in. Audio type, we wanna leave this in spatial. We don't wanna do normal because then that's just stereo left and right. And then none, obviously, there's no audio. So spatial is gonna give us that spatial recognition for when we're syncing up with the audio that we recorded separate from the camera. We wanna make sure to check this export the audio file along with the camera and then we can change our output directory path. So we can just set that up to export to wherever we want and then we can name it in here. Now, if you're just doing one clip, you can go ahead and hit stitch now, but if you're doing a bunch of different clips, you can add it to the batch list and then go through every single one of these and make those same adjustments. Once you're done with that and you have a bunch of different clips in here, you're gonna go right down here to start all and we can just hit that and it'll start processing all of these videos. Like I just said, it does take a little while and you need a pretty powerful computer to be able to handle all of this. It took about two hours to export five different clips. And once you have them in the equi-rectangular format and they're all stitched together, I'll show you how to bring them into Premiere. So here we are in Premiere and we've opened up a new project. What we're gonna do is go and find our exported footage. So I have these five audio files right here and then these five video files all the way down to the bottom, excluding this one because that was just a mess up. So I'm gonna drag all those into Premiere just like you would a normal clip. It'll take a little bit because these are pretty big files. So once all your video clips are imported, you can go ahead and grab them all 
and drop them onto the timeline. And you'll notice right off the bat, we have the equirectangular format, which is exactly what we need to start editing this 360 video. But if you want to see it, how your viewer is going to see it, if you go down to the button editor over here and then look for the toggle VR video display, you can drag that down, hit okay. And now we can jump in and see what our footage looks like and move it around just by clicking and dragging. If your video doesn't come up in a 16 by nine or you wanna change the aspect ratio of it, if you right click on it, you can go to VR video settings and then you can change it to 160 by 90. That's gonna give you a 16 by nine aspect ratio or you can change it to whatever you want. So now that we have our footage in here, we have it on the timeline, we can look around, we're ready to start editing it. And what you're gonna do is just go through the editing process like you normally would. So you can trim up the clips, you can move around, rearrange them, do whatever you need to, to cut this story or whatever your sequence of shots together is. Now I find it a little bit easier to actually back out of the VR video mode and go back to the equirectangular view. This allows you to see all of the action that's happening in the shot, so you don't have to keep panning around as you're editing to try and see what action is going on at what point. It definitely looks odd and maybe a little bit trippy at times, but it is definitely a faster process for editing. So I'm just gonna go through here real quick and edit this and rearrange and get my shots all together. Now I've gone in and added markers just so I can trim this up really quick for you. It does take a little bit of time to go through these because of the processing power that it takes to run this, and especially with a screen record, I, my computer can't really handle it. Once you have your image locked, now you can start adding effects and transitions. But because of how this is gonna be viewed, you can't just use regular effects. So if we go up into the effects tab over here, and then we search for VR. These are gonna be all of the ones that are gonna be able to be used seamlessly with our 360 footage. For the video effects, there's gonna be one effect in here that we're gonna use on almost every single clip, and that's the VR rotate sphere. What this effect does is basically allow us to set the direction that the viewer is looking in, so every time that we change the shot, they're looking in the direction that we want them to, and then they can look around wherever they want after that. We'll almost always use a video transition in between each shot as well, because it can be pretty jarring to teleport from one place to another, so having those smooth transitions makes it a little bit easier to digest when you're going from one location or one shot to another shot. So let's go ahead to our first clip here, and then we can drop on that rotate sphere. Now what we're gonna have to do to actually properly adjust this is jump into the VR video display, and go over to control panel and the effects control, and now we can use the tilt pan and roll axis to adjust where the viewer is gonna be looking when they cut to this shot. So I'm gonna go to the very first frame, take a second to load up here, you wanna make sure that your degrees are both at zero. That means that this is the direction that your viewer is gonna be looking when you go to this shot. And to adjust that first frame, we're gonna go over here to the pan Y axis and we can rotate this around. So wherever this is set, that is where the viewer is gonna be looking when you go to this shot. So I wanna have it look right at this Jeep here in the center because that's what we're gonna be following. And then I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the next clip and I'm gonna do the same thing. So go to the very first frame drop on the rotate sphere, and then rotate the pan axis to be looking right at me and my friend here playing some soccer. And we'll go ahead to the next clip and do the exact same thing. And I'll just speed this up and do it to all of the clips, which you should be doing to yours as well. So there we go, we have that on there. And now we can go and we can change our transitions for all the shots. I'm using the iris wipe, which is basically like a portal that comes in and transports you to another place. Now that's basically it. We have our footage in here. We've trimmed it up. We've put transitions on it. We've rotated it so our view is correct. And next thing is to work on audio which I'm going to do in the next video. And then we'll talk about exporting all of this and uploading it to YouTube. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to stitch together and edit 360 or VR video. And hopefully you got something out of it as well. If you have any questions about it, make sure to leave that in the comments below. Definitely stick around for the audio video, which will be coming out tomorrow on the whole post workflow for VR audio. And if you wanna see more videos just like this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you